Hello, I'm Dr. David Saperstein, Director of the Center for Complex Neurology, EDS and POTS in Phoenix, Arizona. This video will address the management of mast cell activation syndrome, or MCAS. I encourage you to look at my previous videos on manifestations of MCAS and diagnosis of MCAS. So once a diagnosis is made, then on to management. So a quick recap, mast cells are a type of white blood cell they can be overly reactive and they release many different chemicals. One of those is histamine. So using medicines and histamines that block the effects of histamine can be a valuable uh, way to treat. So what we generally think of antihistamines like Benadryl or Zyrtec are so-called histamine 1 or H1 receptor blockers. And what we find is that doses often need to be higher than usual to be effective in treating MCAS. So in, for instance, Zyrtec or Allegra Claritin, one pill a day would be a standard dose. And for MCAS, we'll often do two pills a day, one in the morning, one at night, either two of the same type or sometimes taking like a Allegra in the morning and Zyrtec at night. So, these so-called second-generation antihistamines that I've been speaking of, Allegra, Zyrtec, Claritin, Zizel, on paper they're all the same, um, but any given person might notice that they have side effects with one but not another. They may also notice that one works better for them and another doesn't. So sometimes it's definitely worth experimenting to see if, if, if one works better for you than another. I mentioned there are histamine 2 receptor blockers, or H2 blockers. We usually think of those as being medications involved in regulating acid production in the stomach, which they do. So medications like Zantac, also known as ranitidine, or Pepsid, also known as famotidine, can be used to treat acid reflux or ulcers. But those are H2 blockers, and there are H2 receptors not just in the stomach, but throughout the intestine and in other parts of the body, even the brain. So blocking both H1 receptors with traditional antihistamines like we talked about, Claritin, Zyrtec, Zizel, Allegra, or something like that, or even older antihistamines like Benadryl. And then blocking H2 receptors using an H2 blocker. And again, taking those twice a day seems to work best for people with mast cell activation syndrome. Going a step further is using something that is a stabilizer of mast cells. And there are different ways to stabilize the mast cells to help prevent them from releasing their chemicals to begin with. Um, one mast cell stabilizer we often use is something called chromalin, or sometimes called chromalin sodium, or brand name gastochrome. And this is a liquid that comes in these little plastic ampules and you squeeze the contents into a glass of water for instance and you drink that 10, 20, 30 minutes before meals and that helps get to the mast cells before you eat, stabilize them and that can minimize a lot of gastrointestinal symptoms. It may minimize other problems. Gastro, um, sorry, chromalin can actually be inhaled in a nasal spray. It can be inhaled through a nebulizer and so sometimes that can be used to treat nasal or, or lung problems. Um, chromalin doesn't get absorbed all that well beyond the GI tract, so there are other mast cell stabilizers that we'll often use. There's something called ketodafin, uh, and it has a little bit of H1 antihistamine effect, but is also a mast cell stabilizer. It works differently than chromalin. Uh, the thing about ketodafin is it's not available in the United States in a pill form. You can actually get it in eye drops to treat allergies, but um, it's not available as a pill form, but it can be readily obtained from what we call compounding pharmacies, special pharmacies that can take the chemical powder of ketodafin, put it in capsules, and the ketodafin can generally just be taken twice a day in capsule form, and it can be quite effective at stabilizing mast cells, helping GI symptoms as well as many, many other symptoms of mast cell activation syndrome. Sometimes ketodafin can cause sedation, can cause weight gain, sometimes cause irritability. Usually it's well tolerated. Sometimes the dose needs to be increased, so we may start at one dose and end up increasing the dose to try to get the effects that we want. There are natural ways to go. So there's something called quercetin, which is a, a supplement. It's a, com a component of 
fruits and flowers. It has antioxidant properties, but it's also a natural mast cell stabilizer, and that could be found in supplement form alone or combined with other substances that can also stabilize mast cells. Um, there's more that may need to be done. There's other ways to help mast cell activation syndrome, but uh, sort of this cocktail of H1 and H2 blockers and one or more mast cell stabilizers is usually a starting point. There's more that I'd like to share with you about the center, and that could be found in additional videos. Please go to our website and find links to other videos or find ways to contact us to get more information.